Hi everyone, this video is all about solving simple equations. So our learning goal is we are learning to solve one and two step equations. In order to solve a one step equation, your main goal is to focus on inverse operations. Inverse operations are two operations that undo each other. For example, the inverse of addition is subtraction. The inverse of subtraction is addition. They undo each other. The inverse of multiplication is division, and the inverse of division is multiplication. And then another inverse operation set that we're going to work with this year is the inverse of squaring a number, like 5 squared, which is 25. How do I undo a square? I take the square root. The inverse of square root is squaring because the square root of 25 is, will bring you back to that 5. When we talk about equations, we need to know that an equation is when two expressions are equal. In this example, I have the expression 3x plus 5 is equal to the expression of just a cute little 12. When those two things are joined with an equal sign, they create an equation. Equations have things called variables, coefficients, and constants. The variable are the letters that we use for the unknown amount. In this case, the variable is x. The coefficient is the number in front of the variable. So the coefficient here is 3. It's the number that kind of works with the variable. It could be positive, it could be negative. Coefficients can be a fraction. Coefficients can be a decimal. Coefficient works with the variable. And then the constants are the numbers that stand alone. So in this case, I have a positive 5 and a 12. Those are the constants. So let's try some examples. I want to solve for x, and I need to show all of my work. Okay, I am big on showing work. My motto is no work, no credit. Even though you can probably do number one on your own and you already know the answer, I need to see your thinking. I need to see your thought process. I need to see the inverse operations. Okay? No work, no credit. Our equations are just going to get longer and more complex, and I need to make sure that you can show your work through each and every step of a multi-step equation. And also, you need to show your work because you need to be able to explain your learning in words and be able to teach somebody else. So our goal is to isolate the variable and let's take a look at what our vari where our variable is right here in our equation. It's being multiplied by a negative 3. I don't know why my colors are not working. So this is multiply by a negative 3. So I'm going to do the inverse which is divide by a negative 3. And I no longer use this symbol. Get out of here with that. To show division, we use a fraction bar. A fraction bar literally means divide. So I'm going to divide by negative 3. If I divide by negative 3 on the left, I have to divide by negative 3 on the right. You're dividing by whatever that coefficient is. It's a negative 3. So why do I divide by negative 3? Well, what's negative 3 divided by negative 3? 1. This creates a 1x, or just x. On the other side, what's negative 36 divided by negative 3? Positive 12. And that's my solution. The best part about solving equations is we will know our answer instantly if we check our work. So let's take our original equation and substitute in our answer for x. Negative 3 times 12. Does that equal negative 36? Well, negative 3 times 12 is indeed negative 36, which equals negative 36, which means we did it correct. Number 2. I have y plus 3 and 4 tenths equals 5 tenths. We don't say 3.4, right? You want to use the proper math vocabulary. You want to say the place values. So I'm adding... 3 and 4 tenths to my variable. The inverse would be to subtract 3 and 4 tenths. So I'm going to subtract 3 and 4 tenths here 
and on the other side of the equation. If you like to stay organized, sometimes I suggest putting a dash down your equal sign just to keep your left and right sides clean and organized. So I'm left with y. What's 3 fourths minus 3 fourths? 0 equals 5 tenths minus 3 fourths. Decimals, think money. What's 50 cents minus $3.40? Negative $2.90. Again, we can check our solution by taking our original equation and plugging in what we got. We got negative 2 and 9 tenths plus 3 fourths. Will that equal 5 tenths? Well, yes it does. 5 tenths equals 5 tenths. So, we did it right. Number three has a fraction. Don't be scared of fractions. I'm going to show you two ways how we can tackle a fraction. The first way is with a bar model. If you don't embrace bar models, you're crazy. They make everything so easy. Two-thirds of some number is negative 14. Two-thirds of a number. So, ready? Watch this. Here's my number. I don't know what it is, but I do know that two-thirds of it is negative 14. If two-thirds of it is negative 14, that means one-third of it is negative 7. And if these two boxes are negative 7, this one has to be a negative 7 because it's equal parts, which means that the whole thing is negative 21. So x is equal to negative 21. Ah, that wasn't so hard. Write this down, draw the picture. I'll show you another way. Two-thirds x, right? We have a fraction, and I want to eliminate that fraction, okay? There's something called a reciprocal, which I'm sure you've heard before. The reciprocal is the flipped fraction, the inverse. Two-thirds, the reciprocal is three-halves. And what happens when I multiply reciprocals? Well, two times three is six. Three times two is six. So when I multiply a number, a fraction, by its reciprocal, I get a 1. I get a 1. And that's what we want because we want to eliminate that fraction. So I'm going to leave the word reciprocal up there, but I'm going to erase this. So here we go. 2 thirds x equals negative 14. So I want to multiply both sides because these are joined by multiplication, okay? It's different when there's a fraction with an addition problem. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, 3 halves. Flip it, which means I have to multiply this side by 3 halves. Because when I multiply 3 halves times 2 thirds, this is a big fat 1. And I'm left with x equals. Which means on the other side, I have to multiply my whole number times a fraction. Negative 14 times 3 is negative 42 over 2, which is equivalent to negative 21. Hey, didn't we get that with our bar model? x is equal to negative 21. Number 4, I have x minus 2. So I'm subtracting 2 equals negative 13. What's the inverse? Add 2. Again, if you want to draw the line down your equal sign, stay organized. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. x what is negative 2 plus 2? 0 equals what's negative 13 plus 2? Negative 11. Let's check our work. Plug it in. Substitution. I'm going to take my answer and plug it into my original equation. Does negative 11 minus 2 equal negative 13? Yes. Negative 13 does equal negative Number five, I want to throw lots of fractions at you. The only way to get better at solving equations with fractions is to embrace the fractions. So look at what my variable is doing. I'm adding one-third. So the opposite, the inverse, is to subtract one-third. So I'm going to subtract one-third here. And on the other side of the equal sign. You want to draw your equal sign line? Let's do it. So I'm left with x equals 
what is one third minus one third? Zero. So I'm left with five sixths minus one third. Don't be scared of the fractions. You need what's called common denominators. Remember that? Five sixths minus, let's make one third into six. It's equivalent to two six is equal to x. Five six minus two six is three six is equal to x. And yes, always simplify, create your equivalent fraction. X is equal to one half. Ooh, look at this one. Write an equation and solve. To find the value of X, check your solution. I have a triangle with three angle measures. X degrees, 98 degrees, and 50 degrees. And it says the sum, addition, of the interior inside angles of a triangle is equal to 180. That means angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 equals 180. Okay? This is an important fact to pay attention to. All triangle angle measures will equal 180 degrees, no matter how big or how small. So I'm going to write an equation. If it says write an equation, you better write an equation. Angle 1 x plus angle 2, 98 degrees, plus angle 3 is equal to 180. Now let's solve. What do you think I should do first? x plus 98 plus 50. Let's combine these like terms. x plus 98 plus 50 is 148 equals 180. Now I have x plus 148. I'm going to do the inverse and subtract 148. So x, 148 minus 148, 0, equals, what's 180 minus 148? 32 degrees. So I'm going to go back up to my triangle and put a 32 degrees here. And I can check it by knowing that 32 plus 50 plus 98 does that equal 180? Yes, it does. Let's talk two steps. Two steps. Don't be scared, okay? You just have to do two steps and show your work. So take a look at the example I have. Negative 1 fourth x minus 3 equals negative 14. So it says step 1, eliminate the constant, right? Here is my constant. I have x and I'm multiplying by negative one fourth. And then I'm minusing, or no, it's not right, minus, let's write subtract three. So we're going to do the inverse for both. Eliminate that constant first, right? Because we want to isolate the variable, but we can't really go near him until we get rid of this straggler by doing the opposite and adding three to both sides. Let's draw our line. Negative 3 plus 3, 0. So I'm left with negative 1 fourths x is equal to, what's negative 14 plus 3? Negative 11. And here I have a fraction and a variable joined by multiplication. So we're going to use what's called the reciprocal. Okay? Because step 2 is to multiply or divide by the coefficient. My coefficient here is my negative 1 fourth. And I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is negative 4 over 1. Just flip that fraction. Which means I have to pull, multiply the other side by negative 4 over 1. Do we even need the 1? Yeah. Let's get rid of it. So I have negative 4 over 1 times negative 1 over 4. These are reciprocals, which make me a big, fat 1. So I'm left with x. And what's negative 11 times negative 4? positive 44. Right? Okay. Last one. Write an equation and solve to find the value of x. Another triangle question. Yay! So the sum of the inside angles of a triangle is equal to 180. That means angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 equals 180. So there's your equation. Angle 1 plus angle 2, oops, not 2, 10, plus angle 3 
equals 180. Okay? Looking here, let's combine the like terms. What's x plus x plus x? 3x. And then I have a plus 10 and a plus 5. That's plus 15 is equal to 180. Look at this. I'm at a two-step equation. Eliminate that plus 15 by doing the inverse. 3x, what's 15 minus 15? 0 equals, what's 180 minus 15? 165. Now I'm at a one-stepper. What's the opposite of times 3? Divide by 3. Divide by that coefficient. So 3 divided by 3 is a 1. So I'm left with x is equal to, what's 165 divided by 3? 16 goes into 3 5 times, 15, bring down the 5, 55 degrees. Why isn't my 5 up here? There we go. Okay? So I'm going to go back because we're not really done. That means that this little guy right here is 55 degrees. That's what x equals. What does that mean that this angle is 55 degrees here? No, this one is 55 degrees plus 10, which is 65. And this one here, angle 3, is 55 degrees plus 5, which is 60. Let's check. Does 60 plus 65 plus 55 equal 180? Yes, it does. So we did it correct. Let's try some one and two step on our own. 